Hey, welcome back. I'm going to continue on now on FreeCodeCamp's Responsive Web Design Certificate, and we are learning HTML by building the Cat Photo app, um, which you can see here starting to be built out. Um, so picking up where we left off before, step 50, um, the legend element acts as a caption for the content on the field, in the field set element. So this gives users context about what they should enter into that part of the form. So we just want to add a legend with the text um, is your cat an indoor or outdoor cat above both of the radio buttons? So I'm going to grab this text here just to copy that um, and then basically within the field set um, let's type a legend so like that legend and we just want the text like this and if I scroll down we can see here it's actually given us some formatting um, and we can now obviously select if our cat is indoor or outdoor on the form. These are the two radio buttons that we had before. Um, so let's check that code and it should be good. Perfect. So 51, next you're going to add some new form input elements. So add another field set directly below the current field set element. Um, so that's down here. So we want to add another field set, field set and let's close that off like so um, and i'll leave it as this for now we'll be inputting extra elements as we go it seems okay submit to next so we want to then add a um a legend element um, with this text so let's just grab that so what's your cat's personality so legend Legend, like so, like that, check your code, and there we go. And as you can see, we're starting to build out now our forms up top to bottom. And let's see what input elements we'll have here. So this time we're going to use checkboxes. So it's the same input element, but the type is checkbox um, rather than radio. So this will give us a text box um, or checkbox, sorry, option. Um, so let's do input, and then we'll do type equals checkbox as a string here. Um, then we close that off like so. And it looks like, actually, no, we want uh, tacos. Oh, sorry, loving. And then we can close off that input element here. Um, and you can see we've got our checkbox. And if I click into it, it highlights it with a, a tick here and this is sort of default um, using Chrome browser styles it might be slightly different if you're using a different browser but that's what it looks like out of the box so let's check that and ah okay sorry so input is actually self-closing as I thought so let's do that and if we check that um, hmm. it should be within it um, so what am I doing wrong here Ah, of course. So we actually don't need this. The option should be loving. Um, let's see. Just trying to remember. Okay, there we go. So sorry, it's just the input. There's not a, a self-closing tag. Um, as such. So step 54, add an ID, ID attribute with the value loving. So that will be inside the input tag like that. And that is for the loving checkbox. Uh, step 55, there's another way to associate an input element with the element itself. Um, so we can nest the text within a label and add a for attribute with the same value as the input element's ID attribute. Um, so associate the text loving with the checkbox by only nesting the text inside a loving label element. So let's do label like this. And we need to close the label tag. And then we want this to be associated with the input element. We just need to do for and this will be um, 
the ID attribute. So again, nothing like so. And you can see nothing's changed in our appearance. It's just now associating this text or this label and text with the input element. I believe that should be okay. So step 56, we add the name attribute with the value personality to the checkbox input element. So let's do a name equals personality. And if you notice, um, while you won't notice it in the browser, it basically, it will make it easier to sort of work with the data um, from the form at a later stage. Uh, obviously grouping, let's say the personalities that you might check um, and then obviously submit the form. So that's where we add a name attribute. Um, and let's have a look here. So it does not have a name attribute. Ah, oh, apologies. So I've added the name attribute to the label. Let's add it to the input text or the input element. There we go. So step 57, add another checkbox after the one that we've just added. Uh, so let's just copy all of that because we're basically going to be duplicating it. But this one we want as lazy. So let me just highlight a couple of different sections here. Lazy, like so. And just for the text, I'll give it a capital L. And if I scroll down, you can see, I don't know why it's um, looking so wide. So this should be a ah, type checkbox. So now we should have two checkboxes, loving and lazy. And you can select uh, both or, or just one so far. So let's check that code. Perfect. So 58, add a final checkbox after the previous one with an ID attribute value of energetic. Um, so that will be all of this again. So let's add it here now, like so. Energetic, and this will be a capital E. And um, again, we're associating this label with the four attributes to the input itself. And if I scroll down now, we can see we've got our three checkboxes. And you can select all of them or one of them or a couple or two, I guess, um, and sort of any elements that you want to be submitted with your form. There we go. So let's submit and go to the next challenge. So like radio buttons, form data for selected checkboxes are name and then value pairs. So whilst the value attribute is optional, um, it's best practice to include it with any checkboxes. So we want to add a value attribute um, to each of the checkboxes value. Uh, sort of, yeah, I guess each of the checkboxes, sorry. So these input elements. So let's grab each of these after the name and we'll do value. And, and this should be basically equal the ID. So for this one, it's loving. This one here is lazy, uh, value lazy and this one is energetic like that and obviously this doesn't update anything on the page it's just for when we're grouping it and working with the data that we get back if that input is checked it will then sort of you know sort of send um with the form sort of you know the the name and the value is energetic name value is loving name value is lazy that should be all good there we go and then finally step 60 in order to make a checkbox checked or radio button selected by default, you need to add the checked attribute to it. So there's no need to set a value to this. You literally just pass in checked um, on the input element and then it, it will basically check that for you as in it will give it a tick here like that. That's the checked state effectively and this is unchecked. Um, so the we want to add a checked to the first input element so let's just do after the value, let's do checked. And we can see here that updates and you can see now by default, loving is checked and the other two are not. And obviously you can toggle back and forth, um, but this is just for a sort of initial page load. Let's just check that and that doesn't pass. So let's see why uh, checked is missing the first radio button. Ah, sorry, it's, this is a radio button, not our checkboxes. Um, so that will be this one. So after that, we can do that. And you can see here now we've got indoor is checked and outdoor is not. So let's test that. And 
Oh, okay, sorry, Mis misread the, there we go, first radio and first checkbox. So actually it's both of them. So let's just grab that checked, pop that back here. And now we can see our default values, uh, loving and indoor are checked and the rest are not um, if they're respective fields. Perfect. So I think I'll leave it there for now. We'll continue the rest in the next video. I hope you found that useful and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.